So pay attention to something here. Genesis 1 3. What did God shine on the earth? What did God shine on the earth? Light. Genesis 1 11. What did he put in the earth? What did he put in the earth? Seed. Genesis 1 3. What did God shine in the earth? Light. Genesis 1 11. What did God put in the earth? Seed. And the same seed is called the seed of the woman in Genesis 3 15. And the same seed is called the seed of Abraham in Genesis 12 2 to 3. And Genesis 15, 5 to 8. What did God shine in our hearts? Light. Genesis 1, 11. What did God put in the earth? Seed. And the seed is called the seed of... And that seed of the woman is called the seed of Abraham. So is the seed the light? Is the seed the son of Abraham? Is the seed the seed of the woman? So light be in the earth is seed planted in the earth. Light be in the earth is seed planted in the earth. So the seed is the seed of the woman and the seed is the seed of Abraham. Talk to me citizens. But when he says light be, who is that light? Himself. So John will say in John 1 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Son, seed, son, light. Son, seed, son, light. So this is the Genesis project that God is going to unite us to himself in his seed, in his light, in his Messiah. God will unite us to himself. That's the Genesis project. In his seed, in his son, in the Messiah. The first thing we see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 is waters. Waters in Genesis 2 refers to the nations. The Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. The waters. Genesis 2, 10 to 14. Waters refers to the nations. So when you hear the Spirit of God is going over the nations, what is that? Global evangelism. The Spirit of God is going all over the nations is global evangelism. When we sing all over the world, the Spirit is moving all over the world as the prophet said it should be. All over the world, the Spirit is moving his world evangelism. All over the world, God is raising men to preach the gospel. That is the Spirit moving. The move of the Spirit is the move of man in the preaching of the gospel. The spirit is not moving to give you a car. He's not moving to give you a wife. He's not moving to give you a contract. No. The project of the move of the spirit of God on earth is God's Genesis project. God's Genesis project. To bring men to the knowledge of Christ. To bring men to salvation. To bring men to a unity with God. To bring heaven and earth together. In his son and in his seed. So Paul is saying, God who commands the light to shine out of darkness, that is the preaching of the gospel. How does light shine out of darkness? Through the preaching of the gospel. So the second time you read the word spirit of God is in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. The first time you read spirit of God is in Genesis chapter 1. The next one is in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. Where he says, in the cool of the day. The word cool is the Hebrew word, the ruach. In the ruach of the day. The breath, the spirit. Then the next time you hear the word spirit is Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. Where he says, my spirit shall not strive with man. The word strife is the word din. D-I-N. Din. In the Hebrew, it means to convince. It means to judge. It means to explain. My spirit shall no more convince. My spirit shall no more judge. My spirit shall no more explain to man. Why? It has been convincing, judging, and explaining for 120 years. And man refused to pay attention. We can't force man. There's a limit to which God in his mercy and grace will appeal to a man. There's a limit where it stops. He allows man to have his way. And allows man to face the consequences of his action. His grace and mercy will follow you. 
to where he can no more follow you. He will follow you because it's a point where his spirit will no more strive. He's not going to force you. He's just going to appeal to you and use everything in his goodness to see how to get you. But if you get to where he cannot help anymore, he lets you have your way. In Romans, he says, well, God shall give them up to do things that are no more convenient because that's what they've been trying to do. And God kept restraining them and calling their attention and in his mercy restraining. But when they get to where God can no more help, then God allows them. So the light that shines in the earth is through God's vessels, the preaching of the gospel. The preaching of the gospel. Then he says, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and we, your servants. How does God shine the light in the darkness? He uses men. He uses what? Men. Say with me very loud, I have understanding of the scriptures. The son of man has come and has given me an understanding. I know God in the person of Jesus. I didn't hear your amen. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. A light that shines in a dark place. Please, I need you here. Pay attention. The word shine is a gradual progression. Phinos in the Greek. P-H-I-N-O-S. The light is emerging. The light that shines. An emerging light. A gradual progression. We are in a dark place. The Greek word okemeros. O-C-H-E-M-E-R-O-S. Okemeros. Until the day dawn and the day star. Until the day dawn and the day star. That is until the actual light and the full light arise in your heart. The day dawn, actual light, the day star, full light arise in your heart. So there's a progression of light until the actual light, the full light arise in your hearts. That is, we ought to take heed how we read the Old Testament because the light is shining gradually until the full day the day dawn and the day star that is the fulfillment of it has now arisen in your heart so that means the light that shines in a dark place refers to the old testament the light that shines in the dark place refers to the old testament the prophecies and the prophets were the light that shines in a dark place the day dawn and the day star full day will be the four gospels the appearance of christ so genesis to malachi the light that shines until the fulfillment of the light in the four gospels genesis to malachi the light that shines in the dark place the fulfillment of the light the four gospels for no prophecy of the scripture for the prophecy concerning jesus that's second peter 1 20 knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation no prophecy of the scripture that is the prophecy concerning jesus so we can call the prophets light bearers light bearers the prophets are lamps what we call candle jesus described john the baptist like that in john 5 35 he was a burning and a shining light the word burning is the word K-I-O in the Greek. It means to set fire on something, to light up. A burning. He is a burning. You will see that in Matthew 5.15, to light a candle. Write those scriptures down for further study. Matthew 12.35, John 15.6, burned. Hebrews 12.18, Luke 24.32. So by saying John the Baptist is a burning it means it has to be lit and if it has to be lit it means you are not the light it says john was a burning and a shining light the word finals the word he uses here for light is the one who carries light so every prophet is a burning it means we put light there 
a burning and a shining light it means it's emerging 